Hello everyone, my name is Christine Sun Kim. I go by CK and I'm an American artist who currently resides in Berlin. This all started when my friend, David Horvitz, we went to grad school together and he actually nominated a piece of my work, my performance at the Super Bowl in the United States. And then next thing I knew, I had an invitation to go to Monaco. I had the opportunity to meet the team of Fondation Prince Pierre de Monaco, and I found out I won the prize, the PIAC. And that has what's brought me here at La Casa Encendida for my exhibition, which is titled A String of Echo Traps. So at La Casa Encendida, there is a new mural that you'll see when you enter. And this mural speaks to a lot of the tension in between spaces and places and concepts. So for this specific exhibition, I'm talking about the tension between notation and transcribing. And what I think about that is sometimes when I draw, I wonder to myself if I'm making a notation or a transcription. Because notation can become a score, but a transcription can't. But I also might argue that when you read a transcription, that can become a performance. This also speaks to my work with sign language interpreters. In our working relationship, I will have my message. They will produce it. But there are different ways to approach that. If I'm able to sit down with the sign language interpreter in advance, and I give them contextual information, additional knowledge, their work actually becomes more of a translation rather than a real-time interpretation. And so seeing that in my work and also in the work that I'm doing as I develop my visual vocabulary around echoes. Now I'll show you the sign for echo. This is an American Sign Language. My one hand is showing the wall. The moving hand is showing the sound hitting the wall and bouncing off of it. That's how in American Sign Language we sign echo. But this sign has captured my fascination and I've thought about it and I've actually worked through it to take it through different levels of complexity. And for this exhibition, for example, I have found myself in an echo trap. So I'm showing the four walls in a room and the echo keeps hitting one wall after another after another, unable to escape. And that echo trap is actually a commentary on two things. It's a commentary on how ableist society is in seeing that people in society and society itself isn't willing to accommodate, to provide access, to provide support to people with disabilities. So what we see in that resistance is society remaining the same, staying inaccessible. It's also a commentary on the deaf community. The deaf community carries a lot of oppression, generations of oppression, having this be repeated and cyclical and carried down from one generation to the next. And that experience of oppression gets trapped in the deaf community. Now I have done drawings and I've done murals on the idea of echoes and echo traps, but this is the first time that I have animation. And it's also, what you're seeing here is not just one trap, you're seeing multiple traps. You're seeing traps suffocate. You're seeing traps loosen up and letting us breathe. That experience of being trapped also makes me think about musical notation and musical notes. So I asked Jan Joost, who is an animator that I've worked with in the past, to create an animation based off of my drawings. Once that process was finished, we added sound. And I asked my musician friend from the UK, whose name is Matt Carmel, to create the soundscape to this piece. I asked him to look at the animation as the score and to make the sound based off of that. And that is what you're experiencing behind me.
So in the United States, there's the National Association for the Deaf, which is one of the oldest civil rights organizations in the United States. This organization is always fighting for better rights for deaf people, for more visibility in society. And one way that they do this is through a partnership that they established a few years ago. This partnership allows them to choose a deaf person to represent the deaf community for that year at the Super Bowl. So in 2020, they chose me and asked me to perform the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, and America the Beautiful. When they asked me, initially I was so excited. But the experience of being on such a global platform to produce a translation took me months of preparation. I wanted to understand the material in its entirety and then perform it. But I didn't do that alone. I was able to ask my deaf friends to give me feedback on the sign choices that I made. Now, mind you, every performer performs the song differently. Of course, the lyrics are the same, but you will see every deaf performer performs the song differently, however they experience it. In my experience, it was just such an honor to represent the National Association for the Deaf in that way. So as... I started out in my career, I was actually a painter for a few years. I hadn't considered working with sound yet. So when I was a painter, I have to say, I always felt not fully comfortable expressing myself in paint. Then I found myself doing an art residency in Berlin in 2008, and I fell in love with sound. There was just something about it. For me, Engaging with sound allowed my mind to open up and to be able to express myself differently. And what I also thought about at that time was that I actually know sound so well. It's in front of me all the time, but I just chose to ignore it. I was also kind of told I'm not supposed to be interested in it. I just thought it wasn't my thing. But then I got into it and it is so interesting. The entire world of sound was so new to me, music, spoken language, all the things that come wrapped up into sound, the history and more. And so finding it as a medium is when I got involved and I also had the chance to work with low frequency sound. And of course, as a deaf person, that's kind of what everyone thinks we'd like. So I was able to kind of scratch my itch, if you will. I always wanted to work with speakers and people said I couldn't. And then I finally could, and then I got bored. But that boredom allowed me to move past sound as I had always kind of understood it and instead take a look at it from a conceptual view, from a performance view, and that's brought me to where I am today. <laughs>